Hello everyone. Uh, these are my opinions regarding the Tuesday, November 12th, 2019 Board of Supervisors meeting. It was held on Tuesday because uh, Veterans Day was on Monday. The meeting started out with an unexpected presentation from some ed ed financial advisors regarding the uh, payoff of the debt re related to the sewer plant. It was unexpected and you could see the board looked somewhat surprised, confused, sedated in many respects. Uh, that was my opinion of what I saw. You can watch the video and form your own opinion on what they look like. Of course, it could be because of the results of the, uh, the election on November 5th, where all three, all two incumbents lost and our three candidates are going to sit in the board of supervisors after the end of the year. So apparently the board had not understood the terms of the bonds. The sewer has about six, $16 million in debt, but only 12 million of that can be paid off uh, in callable bonds. The other four million uh, we have to hold on to and pay them off uh, as the uh, bond uh, agreement states. So we're not able to pay off about four million, but according to these financial analysts, uh, we can meet the IRS requirements by paying off other similar debt so that the total amount is 16 million that we pay off. Uh, and they're going to end up paying off four million dollars of the Ready Country Club debt to uh, take the place of the four million sewer bond debt they can't pay off. So you can see the surprise. Uh, the board has never talked about this previously. This little iteration of the bond debt and the payoff. So. If they allude to the fact that it's not a surprise, I, I would suggest not to believe them. But uh, that's, uh, listen to uh, the Lone Granger spin his little story. You can see he sounds confused at times and often corrects himself as he talks about uh, this issue. And uh, I also, uh, made a comment. I went up there and I asked about the $7 million that they removed from the sewer fund into the general fund. And you'll hear Mr. Granger try to give his explanation on what happened, but that $7 million was removed in 2018, long before the uh, sewer fund deal ever closed. And we were trying to stop the deal, so it wasn't a done deal until it was a done deal. And so they removed that seven million inappropriately, and they admit that they used the money to buy the promenade. So stay tuned on that one. Uh, you can watch Mr. Bianconi. Uh, he's a uh, will term out at the end of this year. Uh, Mr. Bianconi, or uh, as when I first uh, met Mr. Bianconi and Mr. Casadas, uh, immediately I labeled them. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Uh, Tweedledee is Mr. Casadas and Tweedledum is Mr. Bianconi, in, in my opinion. Uh, and also in my opinion, he would be classified as the village idiot. So just listen to him. He makes a very confusing motion. In fact, he has a, a very bad habit, if you'll notice in the videos. When you make a motion, you're supposed to say, I motion, and then state what the motion is. But you'll see him almost, well, every single time, he just says, someone talks about it, and he says, I motion, and that's it. Well, he did it this time, it was very confusing, and the supervisors had to correct it. And you'll notice also, uh, during this first 28 minutes, especially when Michelle Kircher is up there asking some questions. Uh, Crusaders is his usual obnoxious self. And they try to avoid the fact that Michelle was talking about some other debt, which you will see as they make the resolution at the end of this 28 minute period, where Mr. Uh, 
Granger, the Lone Granger, throws in a, another little bond that had nothing to do with the sewer plant, and Michelle was trying to say, hey, we should wait until we pay that off to determine if we could put the money in, a, in a, some kind of treasury note where we can make a lot of interest and pay off the debt as we go. Well, he, he snuck this other non-sewer debt in there at the very last moment, which Michelle was t trying to talk about, and Mr. Casadas was attempting to ridicule her. So uh, it's, all, it's all a game with these people. Even, if, even though they've lost the election, they continue to uh, try to subjug subjugate the, uh, the, the private citizens. So that's about uh, uh, one other thing is uh, Michelle also asked, well, what's the cost for all this? You know, there's attorney fees, uh, other types of fees that we're not aware of. And uh, Michelle asked the question and they could not respond. Now, we should not be doing these types of things without understanding every little aspect of the deal that's coming down. How does it come about? What are the dates? What is the cost to the public? Now, I agree when they say that it has to be done because it's related to the sewer, but they should also know what the cost is. You know, the public wants to know what the cost is to, to do all this. So, but you'll hear them. They don't know. So, uh, we'll have to wait. And I guess we'll see. So, after the tw first 28 minutes, uh, the actual uh, meeting started, the regular meeting started. And uh, you'll see in, the, in my uh, index, the first three items are addressed under old business uh, uh, during that 28 minute period. So they start out with the golf report. And it's interesting because the golf report indicates that uh, the profitability has dropped a little bit, but this is to be anticipated because uh, as the season goes on, they incur more green, green costs, maintenance, and et cetera. And I want to make sure everyone understands. Long ago, there was a Pell report study done, and it indicated very clearly that the golf course will break even or make a little bit of money, but it's not expected to be a big profit generator. So the fact that these guys have done a great job up to now at one point, $100,000 in profit, and we're still, we're still profitable, uh, is, a good, is a good thing. Uh, Mr. Spies has done a good job, and the people working there have done a good job. But what bothered me about this situation in the video, you'll see it. Now, you know how I'm restricted from speaking. They watch me like a hawk for that three minute thing and they love to interrupt the, the public comments that I'm making and that other people make too. But uh, all of a sudden from the, from the gallery, someone makes a comment and they invite him up to the microphone to speak. And he spoke at length about his concern about the operation and the reporting of the golf report. I, I don't have a problem with any of that. I don't have a problem with him going up there. We should do that with more people on different, sub, on different subjects. But all of a sudden they broke this rule that Crusaders has where you've got to make your public comment during the first section and then the second section at the end of the meeting. Otherwise, he doesn't let anybody speak, but all of a sudden this guy got up there and started speaking. And I, I'm just confused about what, what are the rules and, and why was this an exception? So you'll see it in the video. And uh, so then the golf report, uh, the right to know requests, uh, they, they go into that. And this is this report that they put together because they're upset about what it's costing them. Well, if they were more transparent, there would be a, a much, much lower cost related to these right to know requests, but it is a statutory requirement. So whatever it costs, that's what it costs. There are ways that we could remediate that by putting more of the information on the website. And I have uh, some information about a win uh, that I just uh, received a notice from the Office of Open Records. I did post a, a little video about that and uh, we'll talk more about that later. Then we have a request for processing and collection uh, 
that uh, you'll see is number six on the uh, old business issues and uh, this has to do with letting out contracts for the collection of the uh, processing of, of certain items like the aluminum cans and all that uh, uh, cardboard and where it's going to go so you need to keep an eye on this because they're trying to restrict competition you'll hear where they want to keep it within a 35 mile radius so that it benefits probably only one person. That person won't be unmentioned at this time, but you could figure out who it probably is. So it's a collection and processing of recyclables. And we don't want to restrict uh, anything. I mean, the more competition, the better. And uh, we'll keep an eye on that. They're going to put some of this out for bidding. We'll see what happens. And then we go to new business. And uh, there's a couple things that I just want to make a comment on. You know, uh, they approved the architectural service for the architect to work on uh, developing what the provenance is going to look like. And I don't know if you saw the capital budget. I posted something about that. It looks like they want to spend about 16, 17 million dollars. I think it's going to be twice that amount. They've approved uh, Tuesday night to use Simone Collins to do this architectural stuff. They should be putting it out to bid, and uh, I don't, I don't think they have. They're going to give it to Simone Collins, but I think when the new board comes in, we'll see what happens with that. And. Uh, the other thing is uh, there's a new daycare service that's going to be opening up down 422. And they'll talk about a company called Safety Net Sanctuary, LLC. This is their answer to not having the Humane Society because they've stopped right now for some reason, but, and we don't have any agreement with the uh, Animal Rescue League. But I looked at the Safety Net Sanctuary website. I'm sure the old, the, the old couple that run it on their farm are very nice people, very caring people, but it doesn't meet the kind of standards that I think most pet lovers, uh, most animal lovers would really want us to meet. We need to return to the Animal Rescue League and negotiate some type of fee so that we can have them take care of our animals. Uh, it's really not a, a high price to pay considering that we pay uh, the Lone Granger $200,000 in one year. Maybe we could reduce his salary and, and take care of our animals. So let me get skip down to the public comment. You'll see where I give uh, Crusaders a letter. That letter is to uh, request uh, uh, to meet at his uh, location of his private foundation, which is Burke's Hometown Heroes. A lot of people don't know he's the president and the owner of Burke's Hometown Heroes. And a couple meetings ago, there was a request to waive the $500 license fee to hold the uh, fireworks at the high school. And he, he did not reveal who he was, that he was the owner. He participated in a conversation at the very last second, recused himself from voting, which uh, is a questionable activity. And uh, I did a right to note request to get a letter for his request to waive the fee. And guess what? I, my request was rejected because there were no responsive uh, uh, evidence to suggest that anyone applied for a waiver of the fee. So I'm still working on this, trying to figure out how the manager uh, reported to the board that there was a request for a waiver of the fee when there's nothing in writing. So I guess we're starting to do things verbally down at the, the administration building. I also asked about the podium. If you've noticed, the podium has mysteriously disappeared. And now I've got uh, two different excuses for this. The one I asked the police chief, he said it's broken. Now you look at that podium, I don't know what could break on it, but now it's been several meetings where it's been gone and you would think it could be fixed by now. 
Then the other uh, was indirect uh, uh, explanation uh, from someone who heard from the supervisors that they removed it because they were afraid someone would bring in a gun. So somehow the connection between the podium and a gun is something I don't really understand. So does this mean now that the podium is gone, no one would ever bring in a gun? But if the podium is there, it might incite someone to bring in a gun. And why would anybody think about that? What's, what's going on with this? So it's very uh, uh, perplexing to me. You also hear me ask about the per capita tax that one of the supervisors, Lisa Vanderlein, is known to have not paid in the 10 years or so that she's lived here. I would like to know if we're going to police our own officials. And we can only go back five years. We can only send her a bill for this year and then go back to five pre previous years. But we should do that because we need to send a message to our public officials that they uh, should be held to a higher standard. But of course, you, you'll see that they're silent on that as well. Also mentioned that they didn't uh, pay any attention to Veterans Day, no comments. Of course, you'll see in the last moments uh, in their supervisor's report, one or two of them mentioned something, but uh, I don't think they were thinking about it. Uh, also, you'll see me talk about the Lone Granger, Mr. John Granger, our township manager. There was an incident where I was trying to follow up on a fire code. You know, the meeting room that we have is, is terrible, absolutely terrible. This is an insult to our community. We've got 26,000 or so uh, people in this community, in Exeter Township. They hold this meeting in a room, windowless room. It's very claustrophobic, and they have 28 chairs for the public. And that's all they can fill in there. A little, little more than 28 people from the public. The rest are the uh, township supervisors and their support group. So out of 26,000 people, only 28 people can go into that room. So what I did was I contacted the Department of Labor and, S and Industry. I went to find out, you know, who, who do I talk to about this? So they directed me to a guy named Terrence Noggle, who works for Great Valley Consultants, and they're on the record with the state to be our third party uh, consultants, contractors, to handle all of our fire code requirements. So I tried to call Terry on a Tuesday. They said he was out of the office and they would leave a message. We got no reply that day. Wednesday, I called in and asked if He's got my message. They said that he did, but no reply from him on Wednesday. Thursday, I, I didn't call in at all. I figured I'd let them see if, see if they'll call me. No reply. Friday, I called, and I was told that I probably won't hear from Terrence Noggle because Mr. Granger, the lone Granger, told him not to speak to me. Okay. Think about the implications there. Mr. Granger has interfered with a public, contracted public official relating to the fire code uh, uh, environment, the restrictions and the uh, investigations of it, and he has no knowledge of that sort of thing. And, and so I, I said, okay, I, I, he's not gonna talk to me, and they told me I would have to talk to Mr. Granger. So I contacted the Department of Labor and, St and in uh, Industry, and they said, uh, try again, and then if you still can't talk to Mr. Noggle, contact us. So I re reported that to Mr. Granger, and in 10 minutes, I got a call from Mr. Noggle. I said, Mr. Noggle, you're not supposed to be talking to me according to Mr. Granger, and he said, well, now Mr. Granger said I could talk to you. So this is the extent of this cancer in our community. Mr. Granger has to be relieved of his duties. Actually, this incident should be investigated by the board in an executive session. And it's my contention he should be suspended for the rest of the year. Without pay would be good. And we should take the SUV that we provide him away from him as well. 
So that's what happened with that. And then finally you hear me say, and I will say this in every meeting, that we need to remove Crusaders as the chairman of the board. He's an embarrassment to this community. You watch the way he behaves, watch the way he treated Michelle Kircher uh, in this meeting. And uh, you should, most people I think would agree with me, he must go. But you'll see those other uh, supervisors continue to support him. So I want you to remember this when we reconstitute the board in January, there will be two supervisors there that are, that are from this board, and that's David Spies and Mr. Casadas himself. And those are the two that, of course, he supported himself to stay in that position as chairman of the board, but Mr. Spies, you should, you should do something about this guy, please. Don't sit there quietly and accept it. We need to show the public that you understand what's going on and at least make the motion to remove him as chairman. We'll see what the other uh, supervisors do. All right, that's the conclusion of my comment, my opinions on this uh, video that you're gonna see. Uh, before the video meeting starts, I have one slide which is going to go over uh, the data for the sewer plant, the operations and the results of those operations for the last two years. I consider it an absolute shame that we sold it. You'll see the money that we made in the last two years. And uh, it's really, really unfortunate. The, the, these, this board and some members of previous boards since 2015 have really, really damaged this community by selling this great asset. All right, so enjoy the, the slide and the meeting. Thank you. This slide that I'm pr presenting to you right now is uh, management's discussion and analysis, unaudited on our proprietary uh, uh, properties, the sewer plant and the country club. I want to concentrate on the sewer plant in this slide because it was recently sold and we received uh, almost $93 million for that. So if you look at item A, I've circled the uh, total operating revenue and you can see that for 2017 and 2018 our sewer plant made it over seven million dollars each year. In 2016 the uh, revenue was 5.5 million so we must have had a, a fairly decent uh, rate increase in 2017. If you look at the, the next one, the box item B, that's our total operating expenses and you'll see that the expenses jumped up in 2018 by uh, approximately 1.3 million dollars and the reason for this uh, increase is uh, we fired our own employees and we hired Edward Gillette and EEMA. EEMA and Edward Gillette are associates of John Granger. He hired them and he did not put this uh, opportunity out to bid to anyone else as far as I could tell. I've re requested documents that would tell me that there were other bidders, but it seems that uh, Mr. Granger's associate was the only one ever considered for running this plant. And I'm still trying to understand why we would fire all of our employees and hire a company that has no experience in running a sewer plant. And we have documents that attest to that. So if they want to challenge my contention, I welcome their challenge. But uh, you can see that we basically uh, gave away $1.3 million in 2018. And uh, it's a sad thing. So the fireworks are really nice, but we'll never see them again. Because in item C, you'll see our income be after uh, operating and non-operating expenses uh, went from $4 million, $4 million in, 
in income in 2017. In 2016, it was a, a little bit over 2.2 2 .2 million, uh, but of course the revenue was uh, $2 million less than it is now. So we were consistently profitable. And you'll see that it dropped uh, about $1.3 million, which is what we, uh, we paid the EEMA to run our plant, supposedly better than our employees could do. And this is outrageous, and I hope that the new board will investigate this decision. But uh, it is what it is. Then in item D, you'll see that uh, this is a transfer out. And I, I want you to pay particular attention to this. In 2017, the 300000 which they consistently did, what is the interest that we earned off of the $7 million jumbo CD that we have. And they would use that interest to subsidize the uh, sewer rates. And that's a whole different discussion uh, about that. But and then you can see in 2018, they transferred out $7.3 million. So they transferred out the, the $7 million CD into the capital fund. And this occurred in 2018, long before the sewer plant was sold. And item E is the change that occurred because of that. You can see in 2017, the change in our position was up 3.8 million. We had in excess of, of expenses, uh, 3.8 million that went into our uh, bank accounts for the sewer plant. Very, very nice return. I mean, if you look at that compared to the revenues, it's uh, almost 50% of our revenues ended up to be profit. That's, that's an outstanding number. Uh, anyone would be proud of that. But then you look at item uh, 2018, it says uh, minus 4.4 million. Now, this is very deceptive because the change of minus 4.4 million is because they transferred out the 7.3 million in item D. So there wasn't any loss. It wasn't a loss. It was just a change in position. So keep that in mind, and then we'll go look at uh, the next one. And as this line slowly comes down and points to the $5,239,000, you'll see for the note above, business type activities decreased Exeter Township's net position by $5,239,267 in 2018. Now, this is unaudited, but it's interesting that this note item F has to point this out because they wanted to make it look like it's a negative. The narrative that they're presenting to us is that, oh my God, the business type activities uh, decreased $5.2 million. It sounds terrible. You would think that the, the average person would think this is not a good thing, but I want to re remind you of item D. The decrease was caused because they moved $7.3 million out of the business type activities. There was no loss. Uh, the decrease was due to a transfer of funds. So our sewer plant was off operating perfectly in 2017 and 2018. And I'm still not clear on why we sold this plant. Uh, various reasons that it would be too expen too too difficult to manage. Uh, things were changing. The plant was in in bad shape. Well, we had the seven million dollars, and it was targeted to maintain the plant. But as you will see, sometime in the future, we will present evidence that the township supervisors failed to maintain the plant as they were supposed to maintain it. And that concludes uh, the discussion on this slide. Supervisors, meeting, please stand for the pledge of flag.
recording this video. Uh, yes, I am. This meeting. Hello. Mr. Powell. Yes, I am, I said. Thank you. <laughs> Sam, would you take the roll? Uh, Supervisor Dean Cohn. Present. Supervisor Anderson. Here. Supervisor Spies. Here. Supervisor Casadas. Here. And Supervisor O'Donnell is, is not present. Okay, we are going to change things up on the agenda. We're going to have the gentleman talk about the proceeds. Go first, and then we'll get into the public comments. Mr. Green. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, a brief uh, presentation for a few minutes on the changes that um, will occur in the use of proceeds that we've been talking about for a while and what impact that has uh, primarily on the uh, future fund balance in the uh, debt service account. Uh, this slide shows the use of the proceeds that we have been talking about in the past. Uh, we're going to talk about the number at the bottom. You note it's $40 million, uh, $400,000, and it assumes paying off um, the debt indicated above, uh, as well as the um, uh, deposits and pension plans. Uh, Mr. We have tonight Bob Tudor. He's the Township Bond Council, and Andre Allen who's the township's financial advisor, will talk in a few minutes about changes in the debts that will be paid off. Now, as a result of the sale, there were a couple of changes at the sale. Uh, the sale price was still 93 five. Um, it was reduced by um, 92 to, to $92,474,000. Uh, we had to pay a uh, deed transfer tax uh, each side paid 1% uh, will get a half of that back uh, from the state when they process the uh, transfer. So we'll get about $125,000 back to the township. In addition, the township had to uh, place into escrow about $770,000, uh, which are the anticipated expenses that have not yet been paid for the dryer repairs. Now, while that's coming out of the proceeds, the same dollar amount would have had to have been paid out of the operating account. So there is no net change um, to the township. We'll get them, there's more money in the operating account and less money to proceeds. The escrow, once the um, project is completed, if there's money left over from the escrow, it'll come back into the township. We believe that that project will be several more months. Um, parts are still being ordered, haven't been delivered yet. And it'll be a while before that uh, dryer is up and running. Um, we also note that uh, while we'd be paying off the 2007-2012 um, uh, debt, they're both call callable. Uh, I'm sorry, are they both callable. And what we're also um, instead of uh, paying off some of this, the other debt, we're going to propose to pay off debt related to the 2015A and 2016 um, debt. And the impact that this change has is significant. The graphic on the left shows the fund balance in the debt service fund uh, on the original proposal, uh, which was to retire uh, the taxable debt. Um, the proposal coming from Andre uh, is to uh, retire debt with longer um, redemptions. And you'll see the graph on the right shows the fund balance uh, going forward because we're paying off the longer term debt, the fund balance increases. Now what this clearly indicates is that at some point in the near future, within a couple of years, the township will be able to reduce the tax rate for the debt service fund. Um, we'd like to um, have a year or two experience with this before we actually reduce the debt because some of the cash flow analysis is based on the current debt we have in, in the township, or I'm sorry, current fund balance. So at some point in the, in the not too distant future, within the next two or three years, the township will be able to reduce the debt service um, tax down. It won't be a lot, but it'll be a, it'll be a reduction in the tax rate. 
and an analysis will be done similar to the analysis up there that will show what impact that tax reduction has on a future fund balance in the debt service fund. <coughs> what we want to do is make sure that we're, you reduce the real estate tax to a point where you're not going to have to increase the real estate tax at some point in the future. The objective here is stability in the tax rates. So that's the end of the, the presentation I have. Um, Andre Allen from uh, Phoenix Capital, the Township Investment Advisor. Uh, he has a few words to, to um, a few comments to make, and he'll be followed up by Bob Tudor, Bond Counsel, who um, has um, a, a few discussions on the Township will have to adopt a resolution authorizing the defeasance of the debt. Uh, he'll cover that and the reasons why we're, we are going this way as opposed to the original. Right. Andre? Thank you, Mr. Granger. Um, again, my name is Andre Allen. I'm with Phoenix Capital Partners. We serve as uh, a financial and municipal advisor to uh, Exeter Township. Uh, based on the, the um, proceeds from the sale of the uh, wastewater treatment plant, the township is required uh, to uh, fees, uh, pay off, or redeem uh, tax exempt bonds that was related to uh, the wastewater treatment uh, facility. And so the uh, first portion of the redemption uh, is uh, related to the series uh, 2012 and, uh, and 2013 bonds. Uh, that's a principal amount of about 14.3 million. Those bonds will be redeemed uh, on uh, December 2nd. And uh, the bonds that are, are being redeemed have a final maturity of uh, July 15, 2026. Uh, pursuant to that redemption, uh, there's a debt service savings of approximately $1.2 million, which is uh, somewhat of the benefit of having to pay those bonds off. That is something that is a requirement. Uh, the second portion of uh, the bonds that we're looking to, uh, to to fees, we were able to have some flexibility and actually go and identify uh, bonds that had uh, higher coupons, uh, which are the series 2015 and 2016 bonds. Uh, in part, we're um, uh, defeasing a portion of those bonds. Those bonds had coupons that range from 3.35% to 3.70% and have a final maturity of August 1, 2000. <coughs> Andre, can you explain the coupon? Sure. I mean, sure. Uh, the, the coupon is basically the interest rate that the township pays <coughs> to the investors that uh, that purchased those bonds. So those investors receive coupon payments on a semi-annual basis. And by paying off those bonds or redeeming or in fact setting up an escrow for those bonds, those bonds will be set aside and will be covered and that debt service is no longer required to be paid because the escrow uh, will actually pay the debt service on those bonds. Uh, the idea of identifying higher coupon debt was in an effort to, as Mr. Granger mentioned, uh, reduce uh, debt service. By way of uh, identifying the higher coupon bonds, debt service is gonna be reduced by approximately $3.1 million uh, for uh, approximately $4.3 million of bonds we are going to uh, the fees related to the series uh, 2015 and 2016 bonds. That process um, will uh, basically, the township will be purchasing um, U.S. Treasury securities that will be put into an escrow uh, to cover the principal and interest through the redemption dates 2015 bonds has a redemption date of February 2021, and uh, the 2016 bonds had a redemption date of August 1, 2021. But the effect of, of both of these strategies is that amount of debt is being taken um, off of the market, and uh, the township's debt service is going to be reduced overall in, in combination of uh, approximately $4.3 million.
And I, I think that um, covers why we're doing it. Bob, you want to talk about the issue about why we're handling it in this fashion? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, my name is Robert Tudor. I'm a member of the firm of Edward Siemens Chart and Lot. And as indicated earlier, we serve as bond counsel to the township. Um, when uh, when you sell an asset which has been financed with taxes and bonds, as was the case with the wastewater system, the IRS regulations require you to take off uh, an amount of debt that's associated with the asset you sold. Uh, some of the debt related to the wastewater system was not callable by its terms, so it couldn't be taken out of the couldn't be taken off the market. So what Mr. Allen is proposing and what is before you. Is, is to substitute other geo debt of the township so that the total amount of geo debt taken off the market is equivalent to the amount of debt that was associated directly with the wastewater system uh, so as to be in compliance with the IRS regulations. Uh, and that is why the change was made to identify the other debt and the higher coupon debt. How much is that debt? Mr. Hughes will take questions at the end of the presentation. Please stay quiet. And you have before you a resolution for your consideration. And what this resolution would do if you approve it is it would approve um, your uh, refunding the debt that Mr. Allen uh, referred to earlier, being the 2015 bonds uh, which mature on August 1st of the years 2040 and 2043, and the 2016 bonds which um, mature in the years 2042 and 2046. It would authorize you to use funds derived from the sale of the wastewater system for that purpose. And because those bonds cannot be called uh, until February 1st, 2021 with respect to the 2015 bonds and August 1st, 2021 with respect to the 2016 bonds, uh, you would be approving an escrow agreement as Mr. Allen mentioned, under which you would be depositing the funds necessary together with the investment on that money to pay the debt service on those bonds until the call date, thereby defeasing those as a matter of Pennsylvania law so that the uh, sole monies that would be used to pay that debt service would be the monies that you deposited and would otherwise be relieved from having to budget uh, for those funds as part of your general operating budgets. Um, and that essentially is the resolution that you have before you. Okay. It'd be appropriate to have the board ask questions. Amazing. No questions. No, I don't have any questions. I mean, it seems to make sense. It's the most, it re reduces our future obligations the most by switching the bonds. You just want to explain to the public about the four million, but the um, why we can't pay off the entire store amount because it's yes. kind of um, just hit that home because that's kind of things that were said was going to pay yeah, off the entire store amount. I'll, I'll, I'll mention it again. Thank uh, you. When when a government sells a facility which was financed with the proceeds of taxes and debt, there are IRS rules which have to be met. It's what's known as a change in use because you sold it not to another government, but you sold it to a private entity. Um, and the IRS regulations essentially say when that happens, you have to take off the market, redeem, pay off uh, um, the, the debt that, that's associated with the asset which you sold, in this case, the wastewater treatment plant. Um, I think the total amount of debt outstanding that was associated with the wastewater plant was about $16 million total, total debt. Yeah. Total debt was $16 million. In a resolution which you passed back on um, October the 14th, you authorized the redemption of about $12 million, which are all of the bonds directly associated with the, source, uh, the wastewater system, which can be redeemed. The other four million roughly of bonds are not callable meaning they cannot be redeemed prior to their maturity. So there's not a way for you to take them off the market. So what we recommended so that you would be in compliance 
with our interpretation of the IRS regulations is that you identify other general obligation debt in essentially the same principal amount and take those bonds out so that the total amount of tax exempt debt that the township is taking off the market is equivalent to the amount of the debt that was associated with the sewer system. And then what Mr. Allen explained was that the effect of that actually is an additional benefit to the township and that by virtue of taking out longer coupon tax and bonds, it actually reduces your interest cost over time. And that $4 million is associated with Reading Country Club. Correct. Just one other point, the uh, series 2007 bonds were not callable. I actually had a final maturity of 2021. So in a much shorter bond, and then it goes to the benefit of actually looking to defeat longer dated bonds, which is what creates the additional debt service savings. I believe that um, if we looked at just the 2007s, I think that was only an additional million dollars in terms of savings. So uh, looking at the 15s and the 16s in, in part, increased that to 3.5 million dollars. Any other questions? Anything from the public? Is this going to be posted on the we uh, website? Yes. Mr. Howell, please come to the microphone. Mr. Hughes. Hughes Howell. I'm thinner than he is. Not by much. Mr. Howell. David, you have 2.5 million dollars. So let me get this straight. Yeah, the mic's not on yet. <laughs> 255 West 47th Street. So let me get this straight. Uh, we paid off 12 million of the sewer debt. There's still 4 million left of the sewer debt. Okay, because I heard somebody say something about the Red Country Club. We're not talking about that debt, are we? Yes, we are. That's the 4 million? You have, well, what he was explaining is you have, we have to pay off 16 million to satisfy the sewer debt. Right. We can't, four of that million is not able to be paid off at the current time. So but it's sewer, but it's sewer debt. It is, but IRS rules, right. the way I understand it, allow you to pay off another four million as long as you replace a sim, pay off a similar kind of debt. Okay. So you're defeasing $16 million of debt, which is due to sewer, okay. and I so believe that satisfies. Well, as long as we do four million. correctly well, summarize Four for the country, but the will satisfy the 16 yeah. million. And that correctly is And it saves us more money that way. And just so the public's okay. clear, uh, and everyone's clear, it has not yet been defeased. It's scheduled. Uh, Andre, you said this at the outset. Once it's scheduled, it's defeased. The uh, 12s and 13s will be done on December uh, 2nd. Okay. And then um, I think we're looking to do the 15s and 16s next uh, 10 days. Okay. Okay. So we, we still have $7 million, which you guys haven't explained about, that you took out of the sewer fund, uh, inappropriately, by the way. And uh, that should be factored into this whole scheme here. Uh, we still have the $7 million, right? Or do you spend some of it? What's that? $7 million? Yeah. Did you spend some of it? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Some of it was used to purchase the, the uh, Promenade Shopping Center. That's board. what I thought. It's not supposed to be used for that because we have the 1999 minutes that state what that is. Uh, you guys didn't know, but it's tapping fees when the, when after, the sewer connections yes. were made. After the sewer plant closed. You didn't transfer it after. It's not, not closed. closed. I'm talking two things. After the sewer plant closed, the funds in the sewer account, any funds, became general obligation, general fund money, used for any purpose in the general fund. But you moved to the settlement clause. Settlement, the, the, the utilization, I'm not, you, you're talking two different things, I'm talking one thing right now. The payment for the rent, for the promenade shopping center occurred after the um, transfer, after the, the wastewater treatment plant was sold. So that money became general purpose funds and it was used to pay for the money. I live in your world, I live in my world. I saw the transaction. We moved to seven million in 2018, yes. long before we paid off the promenade. You needed that money, you used it to buy it, and that's why it was transferred out. Okay, um, is that a question or no? Uh, I'm having a conversation with him, Vinny. No, it's not a conversation. He's conversation with me, I'm conversation with him. So, all right. Thank, Thank you, sir. Any other questions from the public on this topic only? I show.
Michelle Kirch for 1101 Stonehenge Drive. Are we paying uh, early any early redemption for doing this now? And what is it now? I'm sorry. Are we paying any early redemption fees for these bonds? No, the, the bonds are all callable at uh, 100%, so there's no uh, premium for calling the bonds. So you're saying they're all callable at this time? No, they're not all callable at this time, but they're, when they are callable, there is no premium for that. Okay, but now at this time you're you're talking about um, calling these bonds in, and they're not all callable, so there's going to be a redemption fee, correct, on some of them? No, there's no redemption fee. What you have to do is you have to place into an escrow a sufficient amount to pay interest through the call date. So those are so you're still you paying pay. interest on it. Yes. So how do we gain up. there? You gain there by paying off the uh, the coupons on those bonds. So effectively, you don't have savings through the call date. Savings occur after the call date once the bonds are actually callable. Well, we'll but we'll be making. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Go ahead. No, so you based on the fact that you're using um, funds from the sale of the facility and uh, you're not borrowing additional funds that have interest costs on that, you're actually saving by not having to pay any debt service going forward. Okay. That's your opinion. Well, I think it, the, the interest that all this money would make that you're calling these bonds off, would, would or defeasing them, would be a lot more than what you're going to spend if we just keep it in the bank and we could keep paying on the bonds. What are the attorney fees from our side going to be for all these transactions? I'm not, this is being handled by bond council. Uh, I, I'm, excuse me. Um, what are the attorney fees going to talk, cost the township for all this work? You need to address the board. Yeah. <laughs> just. Well, Jim, Sam just answered well, me. Well, it's being handled by bond council. I don't know what your fees are going. What, yeah. Yeah, well, can, yeah. Candidly, um, I don't. We're not going to have that right now, Michelle. I don't have that information. Well, right I now. think before you make a decision yeah. that residents are entitled to know how much it's going to cost for the bond, for the uh, financial advisor and for the bond council, and any other fees that are associated with this direct transaction to see if it's a really the right way to go or not. You just don't jump into the fire because we have some money. And I'm, well, I'm very concerned about that. Aren't we? We're obligated to pay them. Yes, we have to. No, we're not obligated to pay. The sewer you may be. The sewer. But the other ones you don't have to defease at this moment. Uh, actually, I beg to differ. Um, under the IRS regulations, as I indicated, you do have an obligation to take out an amount of debt equal to the amount of debt that was associated with the sewer system. I said, I said you do the sewer, but not the other ones. All the other ones are not um, associated with the sewer. Well, yeah, the, right. We're going to be the, uh, they're, the, What they're defeasing is solely related to the amount of the sewer fund. I think there's total a, amount. I think, I think you guys are talking over each other. The, the confusion is the country club and the sewer rate. I think that's why you're confused. So. Yeah. Well, it, it's hard when you don't give us the information until okay. we walk in here. And then you throw everything at us. And, and but we've actually we had this know. chart. Not this chart today. doesn't we've, tell. We've had this discussion many times. I know we have, and you still have improved, improved your transparency. The normal person doesn't understand these. The normal thing. person. Someone that doesn't work in financial advisor, and <clears throat> don't insult me anymore. Well, don't, you don't insult me enough. Don't insult the residents. Yeah. I'm not insulting the residents. You insulted me enough by pulling a chart out of my hand when I was trying to <coughs> write my address. I'm just trying okay. to make it easier for the residents okay. to understand. Okay. They don't deal in financial okay. matters like right. this. Every Thank day. you, Michelle. Michelle, I mean, the, I, but the way I, just one more time, I think the way I understand it to clarify is correct. By the closing of the sewer plant, we have to, some debt we have to defease. I get rid of 16 million. 16 million. Yeah. We can't do it all with the sewer plant or, you know, whatever. So we're choosing, up, we're allowed to do other debt. But it is, we have to do that amount equal to the what we owe on the sewer plant. I understand that. Okay. What about the big fine from, uh, from DEP for the leakage into the um, Schuylkill River? Is that, has that been? That's been that? settled. Well, it's going to be addressed tonight. It's going to be addressed tonight. Okay. okay. All right, thank you, thank Michelle. You. Any other comments from the public? Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. It would be appropriate for the board to 
act on a resolution. I would think now because the gentleman we're here has got the police questions on it. So we'll go to vote business number one. That should be up. Uh, number two, fees portion of 2015A, general location in 2016. I don't know what Make a motion. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt you. I think you need to do both one and two, John. Right. That's it. I'm sorry. I think you need to do both one. You need to do one and two. One is to confirm right. the prior authorization to the fees, the sewer debt, and the second one is to adopt this resolution, which would defeat the $4 million we were talking about at length. You need a motion to confirm? No, I need a motion to confirm the, the... I make a motion to confirm the authorization to defeat the sewer fund debt. I'll second. Any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. And before you act on item number two, uh, Mr. Tudor, you prepared a resolution with respect to that, right? Yes, I did. Right, so, the, so the motion, if someone's going to make a motion, should be to approve that resolution. Motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? Oh, it's going to defeat, uh, you know, funds from the country club, right? That was supposedly misappropriated. Kind of the, the motion would be to uh, adopt the resolution which would authorize the, the proper offices to defeat a portion of the 2015A tax exempt general obligation bonds and a portion of the 2016 uh, 20, sorry, tax exemption bonds. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? I just have it. And while we're talking about things, I would appreciate the board um, considering authorizing the fees of so the Penvest debt. It's minor, but it's all related to the use of the proceeds. About $145,000, is that right, John? About 120000 120000 Make a motion to authorize the fees of the Penvest 2005 non store debt. I'll no second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you guys can take us. Yeah, we'll take a five minute recess. Thanks. Back to recess. Um, regular approvals minutes, October 3rd, 2019. Do you have anything on the agenda to talk about? Yes, I do. <laughs> David Hughes, 255 West 47th Street. Okay, so we already talked about the bonds. I wish that you would have had a chance to uh, review this information before you made a decision on it, but the spur of the moment. So my other two issues I had was about, the, you're going to adopt a... Uh, the transfer fund policy tonight, and none of us have had a chance to read it. I don't know if it's on the is it on the website? The transfer policy you're going to adopt tonight? No. So the public can review it and not have, to. have any comments prepared for it? I don't think it's on the website. So I, I'm going to ask you to uh, table that until the public can have a look at it, and I can put it on my website so my 3,000 people can look at it. Okay, and then for the minutes that you're going to approve, I think that's oh. funny, Jeff. I like that. You haven't. You left out one particular item that uh, is personal to me, and that is that you didn't put in there that you walked me out of the meeting. I mean, that's well, I put things that are it's part of pertaining the, to the meeting and consequential. You know important to the meeting so that wasn't necessarily important it didn't have to be put in there do you really want that in there? oh i do i think it's a red badge i don't think we need it in there so it's fine okay. that's all i have to say about all right yeah that wasn't a bad all right michelle did you have anything did you sign up for the agenda item comments
Michelle Kircher, 1101 Stonehenge Drive. Again, I just want to say that you need to be transparent. We need to know what it's going to cost to do these ponds. This is the township's money. It's not the board's. You may, you may make the decisions, but we have the right to know how you're spending your money. And for you to jump in and vote on something when we don't know about it is totally unfair to every one of us in this township. And you're doing us wrong. And this is the same thing as in Reading with the Water Authority. They're having problems and, and they're going after the attorney. It's not fair to any of us. And it has to stop. Just like Thank the Reading you. Country Club misappropriation of $2.7 million. <coughs> Thank you. I didn't You're on the board. Yeah. Lisa. Okay. Next up, minutes, budget meeting, October 3rd. <coughs> Uh, I'll make a motion to approve, but can we just make the uh, one correction? Yes. On the minutes of uh, on the on the budget where it says it's at forty one million, it should be at forty million. Make that correction. But I'll second that. There you go. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Ayes have it. Next up, board budget meeting October tenth, twenty nineteen. Motion to approve. I make a motion to approve it. I'll second. Any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Approve the minutes for October 14, 2019. I make the motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? Yeah. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Approve the minutes for the October 28, 2019 meeting. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Approval of disbursements. Make a motion to approve the disbursements. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. So we did one, two, three with the presentation today for the old business as we're moving on with the uh, proceeds for the sewer plant sale. Next up, monthly golf report. This would be the month of September. Right, but I think um, the bottom line is the, the I think it was like $20,000 in uh, positive uh, through the end of September. Um, it was a good month. The, the number of rounds are substantially higher in year in 19 than it was in 18. Um, there's about $20,000 outstanding from the people who purchased the packages, if that's the right word to describe it, that have not been redeemed. Um, there's a fair chance that the majority of that money will not be redeemed, which will just be cash into the, um, into the account at the end of the year. That'll be a transaction that'll occur at the end of the year. Um, the expenses of the course maintenance are less than budgeted, which is um, positive. The expenses related to the golf um, and are a little bit over budget, uh, primarily I think due to some of the personnel issues that um, I, I, just, I think the board just put a lump sum in there and I think the, it was just not enough money to be honest with you. So I think we'll look at that um, going forward and manage that a little bit better. Uh, there's a strong probability that the golf will have a positive fund balance at the end of the year. But again, it's weather dependent. If nobody plays golf for the end of the year, it's going to be less than if people played golf. You know, nobody played today, and they're going to better play tomorrow. Um, that's the issue we have to run, run against because the, cor the course will have to be maintained. The leaves are still falling, there's still going to be maintenance, but the revenue is not going to be coming in. That's going to be an issue that we'll have to deal with. So I think, in all probability, it'll be a positive fund balance at the end of the year. It's just a matter of, is it? 5,000, 10,000, or 20,000. I think a lot of it really deals with the weather going forward through November and December. So it's not going to be 100,000? <laughs> do we have a do we have a report? It wasn't on the website. I'll put, I'll put it on the website tomorrow. I'll put it it seems that from, from July on, we we seem to be losing thirty to 40,000 like, a month. Good. Something doesn't make sense. At, at, at you, you come out, yeah. Everybody else. Philip Harsh, three seventy. Philip Harsh, 
HRSH, 370 Pathfinder Drive. So from July, August, September, we seem to have, we were making money, making money, making money, and now we seem to be losing money. I would, from July and August, was pretty good months. September wasn't a bad month. Right. I'm, I, I understand the budgeting of, of salaries and things like that, but the course maintenance has also declined, but we keep, losing, like we went from 120,000 plus, plus the additional packages that were still outstanding, to now only being up, you're saying $20,000. That's... I, I, I will put the, the things on the website uh, tomorrow. What, what occurs, um, in August, there are three payrolls in August. I, I understand okay. that. I understand that month. I saw that month, but okay. that that makes sense. Okay, all right. But but we were at eighty eight thousand positive plus the outstanding. But now you're saying it's twenty thousand or some number. Right. And I'm concerned about that. Right. That means we lost sixty thousand dollars in a month and a half. Expense. Yeah, I, I I can talk about, talk about some of that. And you're, you're right. We started off the year significant in the whole. We were not tracking January, February, March. You know that. April very positive. May, June, July profitable about fifty thousand a month. Yeah, we were up about 100, 140, Well, April through September. There are some one-time expenses that are popping up, which you will notice on there. We're addressing them. One of those are the closure of the clubhouse. You know that was closed for. Um, mold reasons, $20,000 in tents, which is being submitted to an insurance company. That may come back on later, so that's being charged currently against the golf operation, the rental of those tents. The equipment maintenance, if, when you look at the numbers, you have about 30, 35,000 so far this year in maintenance, repair of old equipment, repair of golf carts, plus the labor associated with that, which is you know, 10, 12 hours a week, so we're over 50 grand. This is all data, um, you know, and, and there was contribution now in the month of October for the pension plan, for non-union pension plan for, for that. So that was a major chunk, which you'll notice in this month's report. So you add that all up and you take, you know, the, the expenses which were held very, you know, in check around 45 to 50,000 a month, June, July, and August. Expenses the last couple months have been 80,000 with these extra items added in. And a consulting fee of Larry Hirsch associated with the RFQ of 10 or $11,000. These things will be noted in there, but this will, I think the bottom line is it's been a very good year, I think, for playwise. You know, with the handicaps of not having an open building, you know, people are still playing, utilizing the facility. Um, it's been in pretty good shape. It's a very good baseline that we have these numbers month to month to get together, form a plan, and you know, address this for 2020. But I think the bottom line to answer your question, you'll notice one time expenses on there unrelated to just daily maintenance that are making up the difference. Yeah, there's a lot of anomalies like yeah. the tents, like the and, and I understand that. I just, I mean, it's hard for me. You know, I was looking for that. I looked this morning. I looked right before I came to the meeting. There was no report. So, yeah. Well, it was not budgeted for the union expenses either. That was that's a twenty thousand dollar hit. Yeah. Well, so it's just, kind of, no, just to share. We should so, know that. Though. Yeah. It's kind of like looking at quarterly earnings for Boeing this quarter and looking at the EPS rather than the adjusted EPS. Yeah, I, I, I know. I just know this one is to be the reduction of the maintenance turned out to be so, a, a godsend. We're actually no. making money the first time. I just think we should be making a little more money. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the hope is certainly there. I mean, it shows that you should be making money. So it's a nice baseline to know what to track. You know, in past years, we did not have a template to go by. It was kind of hit or miss. So we, this year, we took care of the maintenance and we have a monthly report. So that's why we're able to track as, as we are compared to the previous decade. Next up, monthly right to know request report. Yeah, that's the value. 
I mean, we have um, this month we had 18 requests for right to knows. Um, seven have been responded to. Um, one, two, three, four, five have been received and very near the end of the month, so we would not have normally had a response to those um, as well. And most of them have been um, property related, which are the typical um, right to know requests we get, we get for people um, selling property, whether or what's, you know, realtors asking those kinds of questions. Um, some of the ordinances, um, I think that this was a pretty prototypical month uh, last month in terms of the number and the items that uh, people are asking for and something that will just generally pop up from time to time. So we'll put this up on the website uh, tomorrow as well. Questions from the board? Well, the one's looking for the future. Sir? The one's looking for the future. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you do that one? Because <coughs> December 31st, 2019 hasn't come yet, so how do you, how do you, how do you answer that one? Next up, approved recycling, processing, and marketing contract. Mr. Chair, we did the um, recycling contract a little differently this year. In the past, uh, it's been two, essentially two contracts. One for the processing of the recycling materials, and second is for the collection. In the collection part of the um, work, because you did not know, nobody in the township had been, been separated, um, you didn't know where the, the recycling materials were going to be processed at, which was a statement in the, in the collection thing that the um, people who were bidding on the collection had to assume that the recycling processing center would be within a 35 mile radius of the township building, which means that the truck would drive 70 miles every time it had to take materials from the township to the recycling center. So what we did this year was ask first for uh, bids for the um, processing of the material so that the people who were bidding on the collection would know then when to take where to take the collection material to. So if it's, um, it, it, we felt that at, at best, um, if it was 35 miles, then everybody knows 35 miles or wherever the, the, the recycling processor was. We, we submitted the, the bids. We got three responses. Two uh, were from firms who chose not to bid, and the other was from Mascaro, uh, from the recycling center in the township. Um, if the board accepts that, then um, we will, we have um, an added in paper uh, schedule for later this week for the collection, and the collection will say the recycling will be here at, in the township at the Mascara Recycling Center, so those who are bidding on a collection will know where it is, and they will not bid <coughs> on assuming that they have to drive 75, 70 miles every time to take the materials to some place that they don't know where they're going. They know they're being collected here, and they'll go here, and as you know, gas is somewhat expensive, um, that it should reduce the cost of the recycling um, by some dollar amount. So I'm asking for um, to accept the proposal of mascara for the processing and recycling materials. And they were the low. They were the only bidder. The only bidder. That you didn't bid. Motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, I have it. Thank you, business. Approval. Is there a second part to that you're putting out? So we, the board's already authorized the, um, the bid for the collection, so we'll advertise that later this week and we'll get bids, you know, act on that hopefully the next week. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can you just confirm what the motion was, please? So no, the motion is, you want them to vote on it? The, there was a vote, but the motion was, I, I, Vinny, can you articulate what the motion was so everyone so it's clear for the minutes? I think you said I'm going to make a motion. The, the motion would be to uh, accept the bid of mascara for the recycling and processing of, um, sorry, for the clerk. For the accepting the recycling. Accepting. <coughs> for processing and marketing the recycled materials collected by a third party. Is that, that's the motion? That's that, the motion. That is a motion. Did they have a second? Or did Jeff? Jeff I second. Jeff okay. second. Call the vote again. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. 
new business, approve agreement with Berks County Intermediate Unit to print 2020 real estate tax bills. And this is because the county cannot, yeah, the county, the homestead exception. The county cannot print the bills with the homestead exemption. The Berks County Intermediate Unit does that and they do it for other parties. They do it primarily in, in uh, Lehigh County who has a, the municipalities in uh, Lehigh County have extensively made use of the homestead exemption. However, um, we have a proposal from them, from Berk, BCIU, that is several months old, but we wanted to confirm that before I brought it up to the board for action. We have not yet been able to confirm that, so I'd like this matter to be tabled at this time. Okay, table that for next meeting. Yes. Next authorized advertisement for architectural services for the promenade. This will be for the uh, promenade shopping center. Um, as I said earlier, we, we purchased the uh, uh, center. Uh, this would be for architectural services to assist the board um, with developing plans that will be presented to the board and public um, for the relocation of the municipal facilities, including the fire station and EMS uh, to that site. Um, we would take the proposals uh, sometime in late December, uh, post them on the web, um, have some meetings in early January, and probably I would expect the board to take action on this sometime during the first quarter of next year. There's no cost associated with it. No. Cost of advertising. That's it. <coughs> motion. I shall make a motion. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah. Ayes have it. Next authorization to execute automated red light grant in the amount of 299000 for improvements of East Never Sink and Perky Avenue. Um, the PENDA finally submitted the uh, the grant contract documents it would be appropriate for the board to authorize the execution of documents this is for a grant uh, that is 100% um, paid by the state it's for improvements to the traffic signal at the intersection of East Never Sink and um, Perkiomen Avenue and it'll be designed and operational with all the other improvements along Perkiomen Avenue in that part of the township you need a motion? Yes, please. make a motion to authorize the execution of the ARLE grant. I'll I'll second. Second. Any further discussion? Great job, John and team. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Next, the preview key Morgan escrow release number one. That's the new daycare center down as Walmart. We received a uh, request for release of the remaining escrow balance the UP Morgan daycare facility. This is a facility that's along 422 for uh, daycare. The PennDOT improvements have been completed and we did receive documentation from the department that they are been approved. We reviewed the completed items as part of the improvements agreement and um, including the landscaping as well by our planner and everything has been completed satisfactory. Um, we are recommending a release of $149,524.13, which is the balance of the escrow account. And I recommend to the board that motion be made to approve this release. I'm subject to, to uh, administrative staff completing and our office completing any necessary paperwork for release of that letter of credit. Make a motion to approve the escrow release subject to the completion of that paperwork. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. I just wanted to make a quick note. I forgot there is nothing to be dedicated, so there is no need for a maintenance bond. Good. Thank you. Next, approve agreement with Safety Net Sanctuary in the amount of $3,000 for animal control services. This is due to the um, Humane Society closing for temporary. Uh, I to recall that uh, last year the Animal Rescue League uh, proposed handling the um, stray dogs and things and animals uh, for a fee of approximately $15,000 a year. And the board decided that was a little over here at the top as they had been paying about three or four thousand uh, dollars in the past. 
Um, we handled it internally. Um, we struggled through the year. Um, late, later, late this year, um, this organization, uh, Safety Net Sanctuary LLC, uh, approached us about providing that service that AOL had in the past um, for about three thousand dollars per year. Um, we went out and staff went out and uh, inspected the account, um, talked to the people. Um, they submitted a excuse me a contract, which was sent to the solicitor for his review. Uh, this this organization has contracted with a number of municipalities in the county to provide this service. Um, we think it's a, an excellent opportunity for us to work with them going forward, and the, the price is right. So if the boards. Um, and they just signed a deal with Amity, so this is right. we were, This is perfect. Where are they located? Where are they located? Fleetwood's where they located. Yeah, I think it's our best option. And that's just for, I mean, we're going to work on going forward. But we'll uh, still, we still have the microchip. We're still going to receive them that, you know, those lines to reach out to the public and have, uh, you know, do microchip clinics and work with the Humane Society. This is a place. Uh, for safe keeping for animals that are roaming around the police department or somebody else gets them instead of keeping them here they'll be housed there in the 24 hour care and the right facilities and, as opposed to here which is you know uh, large space limitations so, yeah, we have, yes space limitations are going to be putting if, if the board's inclined to approve it i'd ask that it be subject to any uh, legal revisions that may be necessary right. that's great Make a motion to approve the agreement subject to any legal revisions. I'll second. Any further discussion? If I was in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. Ayes have it. Next, number six, adopt resolution establishing fund transfer policy. Mr. Chairman's um, policy, I believe, was discussed at the last meeting. I'm sorry it was not uh, present. Yes. Um, the language in the resolution is identical to the policy that was proposed. I'll read it. Um, B and is hereby resolved the policy of board of supervisors and the bosses authorize the administration to make interfund transfers when said transfers are identified in a budget approved by the board and necessary to reimburse respective funds for budget expenses that are made. A fund transfer to a third party is authorized only following specific direction of the board to pay an invoice or obligation due to the third party. Any interfund transfer not included in the budget approved by the board <coughs> must be approved by the board prior to the interfund transfer taking place. Is that going to be posted on the website? Yes, it will be posted on the website tomorrow. Too late. I'll make a motion. Is this similar to what other townships and municipalities have? It's, it's, it's the general operating process that most municipalities have to. I'll make the motion adopting a resolution establishing the fund transfer policy. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Next, consider time extension for Martin Appliances preliminary plan approval until February 14th. Just to remind Yes, the developer is requesting a time extension to um, complete all the requirements for the planning commission in our office for a proposed Martin Appliance uh, preliminary plan or development along Perkyoman Avenue. The time extension would take them to February 14, 2020. Um, based on the information, we recommend that the board would consider approving that time extension. Okay. Is there a motion for that? Or what do you mean? Yes, I would need a motion to accept the time extension. Make a motion to accept the time extension. I'll second. Any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Next, consider time extension for Church Lane Estate subdivision until February 14, 2020. This is a similar situation where we have a subdivision. However, it's currently in front of the zoning hearing board for a variance pertaining to the steep slope requirements. Um, we recommend that the board uh, approve the time extension to February 14, 2020 to allow for sufficient time for the zoning hearing board to take action on their variance as well as for the planning commission to review any outstanding items. Can make a motion to approve the time extension. I'll second. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? I just have it. Next up, Shelburne Square subdivision plan withdrawal. We received a subdivision plan for McDonald's. The applicant has chosen to withdraw the plan. Um, we ask that the board of supervisors <coughs> take action to accept that withdrawal of that subdivision plan. Essentially, they were just going to cut a parcel out of the whole shopping center just to include McDonald's. However, they decided to, they opted not to proceed with the <coughs> subdivision no longer. We just need to make action tonight to accept that um, um, withdrawal of the plan. I make a motion to accept the withdrawal for the subdivision. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Next, adopt resolution approving traffic and signal modifications at Perpium and Ended Moss. Mr. Chairman, this item as well as the following two items are, are required by PennDOT. Uh, they have modified, they've modified the traffic signals. by replacing the existing conducive loops uh, with vehicle detention detection and both for both volume density operation and stop bar activation. What it means is if they upgraded the ability to detect vehicles at the intersection for the for the actuation of the traffic signal. So it's these they did all three um, intersections because there are separate traffic signal permits for each one uh, will require separate resolutions for them and they are at the intersection of Perkyoman and DeMoss Route 422 and Lorraine and at uh, East Neversink and Hearthstone Drive and it would require three separate resolutions, three separate motions. And any cost associated? No. It's free. They did the work. They need the resolution. That's it. Yeah. I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution and approving the traffic signal at Craigman Avenue and Demolition. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Next one. What do we need up? Uh, motion for Kim and Lorraine. Yep. 422 and Lorraine. 422 and Lorraine. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? I was going to say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. And I got a motion to adopt the resolution for East Neversink Road and Hearthstone Drive. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Okay, that takes care of the new and old items on the agenda, department reports. Start with Clarence. Um, all we can do basically is uh, leave collection, uh, also prepping some trucks for um, the winter. That's it. Chief? Uh, not much. Uh, the department had a, uh, a roving uh, commercial vehicle truck inspection detail uh, Friday, uh, November 8th. Um, Police department, along with three other municipal departments, uh, went out throughout the township and uh, inspected different commercial vehicles. Uh, issued a total of uh, 28 citations, uh, totaling fines totaling $3,500. So they did a real good job. Excellent. Yep. No, the only thing I just want to add is the Norfolk Southern improvement <coughs> and progressing um, with, with weather conditions and so forth. But hopefully, we'll get some warmer temperatures. And things will proceed, but the contractor is working. And her fingers crossed for good weather. Good. That's all I have. When's the uh, what temperature would they not be making the macadam that we would have to worry about that? Well, they're going to be. It's going to be really subject to whether or not the availability of plants. Um, hoping that they can at least get some of the material down early December. The plants are still open. I know a lot of the contractors in the area are behind. A lot of work is being postponed till spring, which has me a little nervous. Um, but if the plants stay open late in December, then there's a good chance that they can at least get some of the, at least the phase course down. Probably highly unlikely they'll get the wearing course because that's temperature, more stringent temperature conditions. 
base course has a temperature condition, but it's a little more um, lax, lower, 35 and rising, versus wearing where it has to be 40 degrees and rising. Right. And with this time of year, it's pretty tough to, to get those temperatures unless we get a, a nice warm, warm front for a week or so. Yeah, I've let people know because you know, I've worked a lot of the parking lots where they push off to it because I was like, really, the plant closed? But we, we would like, to, we're hoping that they at least get the base course down, I think, at least to get through the winter. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Any other questions for any of the staff? Next up, Sam. Okay, I have uh, tonight a report on the, uh, the DEP issue that was mentioned in public comment earlier. So the DEP has uh, proposed a, what they're calling consent assessment of civil penalty. And this is related not just to the, uh, if you want to call it spill, or the, the October last 2000, or last year incident at the plant, but also two issues that the DEP has identified uh, in this consent order, for lack of a better term, going back to, uh, to 2014, so it wasn't just uh, this issue that resulted in the uh, in the entry of this order. Uh, it's been circulated to the board. Uh, it's 20 pages, so it's pretty lengthy. Uh, originally, they wanted to assess a fine or penalty against the township of approximately $135,000. Uh, we were able to negotiate with them some, uh, and the bottom line number that they were willing to agree to is $72,231, which I recommend the board approving because uh, if they were to litigate this issue, the uh, the liability would be much higher. Uh, and there really isn't a defense to some of these things because the it's pretty much strict liability. You spill it, you have to, you have to pay for it. So, uh, so that's that. And if, uh, if you have anyone has any questions, I'll, I'll answer them. But uh, I recommend the board approve this. That was four four or five incidents over like a five or six year period or something. It's, it, there are, it's actually more than that. I mean, there are several, some of these I would characterize as relatively, I mean, I'm minor, I'm not an environmental scientist or engineer, but you know, when they put this together, I worked with a couple of my partners, it's not unusual for DEP when they're, when they're agreeing to uh, the consent assessment like this to include, you know, the, everything uh, that, that goes back quite a ways in time. So it's not That was the first yeah. defense. You said 2014. The, the earliest date they reference on here is a, is a uh, SSO, which is a, a sewer overflow, on May 1st, 2014, and it goes from there forward. Okay, obviously, the most significant being the, the event that happened last year. Is the summary coming now because we sold it, or because of the event last year? We have to. It has to be resolved. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they, or else basically DEP has, has told us we accept this or. Or you know, you know, right. I'm just wondering why they waited so long to. That's not unusual. Do the summary, mm -hmm. not unusual. Okay. You gonna post that on the web? Yeah. Is that being? That's us. Yeah. You're gonna post it? Yeah. This is a, this is a public document. Yes. So I need a I need a motion if the board will entertain. Make a motion to authorize the payment to DDP. I'll second. Okay, actually, can I ask that the motion be slightly modified and to approve the consent assessment of civil penalty? I make a motion to approve the consent a, a, a consent of civil penalty. Okay. I'll, I'll, second. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. That's all I have. Okay. Manager's report. Um, Nothing additional. Public comment. David Hughes. David Hughes, 255 West 47th Street. The envelope I handed you, John, is a request to uh, come to uh, the uh, private foundation that you own and, um, and inspect your tax returns. So, uh, first thing I ask is, where's the podium? What happened to the podium? I got two different stories. Let's hear your story. You can tell me after I'm finished with my comments so I don't waste my time. And the last thing, let's see, what else? Uh, 
the uh, per capita tax related to a supervisor who hasn't paid it. Is there any update on that? Are we going to follow up on that? Nobody? Okay. I guess you guys get away with that paying. And then uh, also, why didn't we talk about Veterans Day? You know, you guys should honor our veterans. You should make a comment. We do it with the sports teams from the school. But nothing about the veterans today. We didn't get to do our supervisor's report, so. And uh, also, the last thing is, it's about Mr. Granger here. Uh, he uh, inter interfered with my communication to the fire code official. He told them not to speak to me, and it took me four days before, before I could finally talk to the fire code official. And I had to bring in the Department of Labor and Industry to do that. He overstepped his bounds, and I hope you guys will go into an executive session, discuss it with him, do an investigation, Chief, find out what this guy's doing here, because he I think he went behind his purview. And hopefully you'll find this to be the case and suspend him for the rest of the year. And finally, my last comment, because you guys love to hear me talk, I'm requesting you to, again, remove Mr. Casadas as the chairman of the board. He is an embarrassment. OK, to that's you. enough, sir. You can hold your tongue. Okay. And if you don't, you'll be removed. We're done. You got me? Okay. Next well, time. You, are you sure me? I'm just saying you will be removed if you don't hold your tongue. We don't need that kind of talk here anymore. It's, it's my comment. Sure. Your, your comment doesn't have to be negative. Sherry Green. Sherry Green. Sherry Green. I'll pass. Okay. Carl Schember. Name and address. Carl Schember, 207 Visa Lane. Um, last meeting I asked you about the lawsuits in support of concepts. You said they withdrew the suit. Do you get paid by them to reimburse you the million dollars that we spent? Do I get paid by support of concepts? Will, will they su re support the township? Will you get the money back? Since they withdrew this, the lawsuit, will you be able to go after them for the money that the township you have to spend more money to chase that money? I don't know that's that that's a million dollars. I don't, know that's some, I don't know how much it is, and I don't know that's something I'd recommend. I was, to answer your question, that's not something I've been asked to look into by the board. Okay, that'll change. Um, why is it when we have new businesses coming into the township, nothing's put on the website? Because some businesses just opened past Walmart. That's what we talked about today. That's the EP Morgan. The what is EP it? Morgan Daycare. Uh, and there was a new brew, a brew place or something, a beer place. It was on TV Friday night at 11.30? No, that's Tasker's Beer Bar by, by the old Sheets. That's been there, that's been there a long time. Has it? Yeah. They make it yeah. sound like it's something new. Next to no, the They just got it. They got on the Eagles I don't, I don't drink, so I wouldn't. They got the Eagles TV, TV show. Better than I, do. I know where it's from. Yeah. <laughs> they got the Eagles TV show. They were on the ABC News or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 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 Two Night Special or something. Yeah. I thought that's that was new. We do have a list of businesses, don't we? No. Where? I saw it. On this new website? I, can't I don't know if it's on the website. Yeah. I saw it's something listed somewhere. No, that, that would be a full-time job for someone to manage. Yeah. The directory of the yeah, you don't want, yeah, you don't want to mix business with private sector. The private sector, I guess I saw business. Yeah, but you're trying to get business into the town to promote the ones that come here. Yeah. Utilities, things like um, trash haulers, uh, you know, things like that, where people frequently ask questions from new residents in the township. But again, we're government entity, so we don't recommend businesses. Um, I'm not saying recommend them, just, I'm just mention that they're... Just clarifying for the board. And at the end of the day, if you wanted us to keep a list of all the businesses, that would be a... Not, I guess keep a list, but we see, yeah. we know about new ones going on because they register. Right. They're not posted anywhere. Right. Uh, last comment. Did you talk to Lisa Vanderlaan last Tuesday at all? I saw. I don't know. Do not know. Okay. You know what we talked about? That was at the polls Tuesday. So was she. That was at the polls. Next stop, Michelle. Are you good? Thank you, Michelle. Next up, supervisor reports. Start with Jeff. I want to thank all the people who helped at the voting polls last Tuesday on election day, and also want to congratulate the winners of the election, both township, school board, and our new auditor. Um, yeah, he is. Jerry's excited. 
Um, also, just a note, uh, left turn signal at the light turning in the boss gobs isn't working. No way. Okay, I, I saw it like five times, so I put it down on the list. And then I just wondered, with the, with the, um, the sound and noise ordinance study, since that got delayed by the weather, would, would we be able to entertain another company, uh, traffic planning and design, to talk to us about maybe them submitting a bid for the study? For sound? The, yeah, with the Whiteman Road issue, because that could be a lot less money than I think. Are we? Then we have to say the fifteen thousand for the company that we talked about. Right. But, uh, the issue of retaining um, a sound engineer is geared towards um, having kinds of importance that you can defend in a court of law. Right. I know that, and they've done that type of work before. And I think they could be a lot less for other townships in the, in the state. Do you need it? Yeah. All right, I'll check them out. Okay, should I have them email you? I know that. What's up? Gary? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Dave? Yeah, again, congrats and I guess condolences to those who lost the election and congrats to the people coming in to the board. I'm not sure who the winners and losers are there, but I wish everyone well. Um, on Veterans Day, I mean, I did a comment that I was happened to be out on the course, and I think it was a very nice thing that a uh, program that was run. Uh, I saw, you know, quite a few people that have never visited the property before because they had a, a special to let veterans come and play golf for the day. And I heard a lot of positive comments from folks that were visiting there, and they were very appreciative of that. People that would not normally come to the property, so I think that was a great idea. And if we can do more of that, it would be great. I forgot one thing. I played at the Country Club the past two weekends, Saturday and Sunday, and the course is great for this time of year, so they're doing a great job of that still. I'll talk about veterans today. I was invited to the um, school, represented the township at Awan Creek. We had a wonderful Veterans Day ceremony, so I want to thank all the veterans out there. Thank um, I just want to clarify something. So uh, it was kind of asking me of a resident, and correct me if I'm wrong. So. The current wastewater rates are not going to change, as far as the letter says here, until no earlier than January 1st, 2021. Yes. And they're not going up 87% at that point because they, they are. They got to go to the PUC. They have to go to the PUC, which will only do a maximum of how much? Three to five percent. They'll set the rate. They'll set the rate, but it's it typically won't typically be, it's in that range. But it certainly won't be 87%. So, okay, just want to clarify that for somebody. So. Um, that's it. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? I was in favor of saying aye. 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 Thank you, everyone, for coming. You care to go back yeah. 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 Yeah.